friends, good morning and welcome to story time. Are you ready to sing our hello song? Let's sing hello friends. Here we go. Hello friends, hello friends, hello friends. It's time to say hello. Now can we also say hola to our amigos? Let's switch it up to Spanish. Here we go. Hola amigos, hola amigos, hola amigos, es tiempo de decir hola. Excellent. For today's story time, we're taking an imaginary trip to the zoo. Can you help me sing a song about going to the zoo? This song is sung to the tune of London Bridge is Falling Down. Here we go. We are going to the zoo. To the zoo, to the zoo, we are going to the zoo, won't you come too? We'll see monkeys and kangaroos, flamingos and cockatoos, lions, tigers and bears too, all at the zoo. Are you ready to see the animals? Great! There's all kinds of ways to get to the zoo, but today we're going to take the bus. And so are some of the animals. So the first animal that's gonna get on our bus with us is a hippopotamus. How huge is a hippo? Well, so when we get to that part, can you squish your face with me? Because that hippopotamus is gonna be squishing us. Oh no. All right, here we go. A hip, a hip, a hippopotamus. Got up, got up got up upon the bus and all the children on the bus said you're squishing us <laughs> oh no can we try that with our hippo again a hip a hip a hippopotamus got up got up got up upon the bus and all the children on the bus said you're squishing us! <laughs> Guess what? The hippo brought a friend, a cow. So we're going to tell that cow to move over. Let's do it. A cow, a cow, a cow got on the bus. A cow, a cow, a cow got on the bus. And all the children on the bus said move over move over. Great. Well, the cow brought a friend too. The cow brought a sheep and we're going to tell that sheep to back up. Here we go. A sheep, a sheep, a sheep got on the bus. A sheep, a sheep, a sheep got on the bus and all the children on the bus said back up, back up. All right, one more friends. A slithery snake got on the bus. Ooh, we're gonna tell that snake to sit down. Sit down. A snake, a snake, a snake got on the bus. A snake, a snake, a snake got on the bus. And all the children on the bus said, sit down, sit down. Now we can take a seat and get ready for our first book. Our first book today is called One Zany Zoo. This is written by Lori Degman and illustrated by Colin Jack. That word zany, that's a funny word. It means wacky or silly. And reading books together is a great way to learn new words. Let's see about this zany zoo. While you stood here waiting with nothing to do, I snuck through the gate and into the zoo. You'll never believe what I saw, what I heard. I swear it's the truth, every last word. One fearless fox grabbed the zookeeper's keys. He used them to set all the animals free. Oh my. The zookeeper chased him, but Fox kept his cool and splash landed right in the walrus's pool. 
two sporty zebras in goggles and flippers were snipping the walrus's whiskers with clippers. One did the combing, the other the trimming. They swept up the clippings, then all four went swimming. Three fussy beavers cooked chili for lunch. They also baked cornbread and mixed a fruit punch. They seasoned and tasted till each one agreed, then called, come and get it, and caused a stampede. That means all these animals are running together. It's a stampede. Four anxious elephants packed up their trunks to flee from their neighbors, a family of skunks. They tried wearing clothespins to block out the smell, but that didn't help, so they bid them farewell. They're anxious, they're feeling nervous, those elephants. Five clever chimps waited high in the trees and watched as the zookeeper searched for his keys. He peeked behind bushes and underneath rocks, and when he gave up, they high-fived the fox. I tried to imagine what else they had planned. Then somebody hollered, come hear the new band. Six groovy roos tapped the beat with their shoes and laughing hyenas sang rhythm and blues. A lizard in sunglasses wailed on the sacks while monkeys kept time on the box turtle's backs. It's an animal band. Seven sad hippos were making repairs from damage they'd caused playing musical chairs. The music stopped playing. They scrambled to sit. Didn't they know they were too big to fit? Eight pompous peacocks were proud as can be while strutting their stuff for the whole zoo to see. They primped and they preened to get just the right looks as fans gathered round holding autograph books. Nine fickle leopards were waiting in line to trade in their spots for some fresh new designs. They chose among triangles, diamonds, or squares, rectangles, ovals, or star shapes to wear. A leopard can't change its spots. 10 rowdy bears led a big zoo parade. The animals modeled the costumes they'd made. They waved to the crowd from the traveling stages. The zookeeper shouted, get back to your cages. Oh, he looks mad. He locked the last cage at a minute to nine. He tossed me outside and said, get back in line. It may sound outrageous, but one thing is true. When nobody's looking, that's one zany zoo. Look, one of my friends came to visit from the zoo. This is Eleanor Elephant. I'm sorry, she likes to be called Nori. So Nori wanted me to share one of her favorite poems and it's called Ella Telephony by Laura E. Richards. Once there was an elephant who tried to use the telephant. No, no, I mean an elephone who tried to use the telephone. Dear me, I'm not certain quite that even now I've got it right. How air it was, she got her trunk entangled in the telefunk. The more she tried to get it free, the louder buzzed the telefee. I fear I'd better drop this song of elephop and telephong. Hey Nori, what time is it when an elephant sits on your fence? Time to get a new fence. <laughs> now it's snack time at the zoo. And this story is called Gladys Goes Out to Lunch. This is written by Derek Anderson, who also did the illustrations. There's Gladys. Gladys loved bananas. She ate bananas for breakfast, 
bananas for lunch, and more bananas for dinner. Look at all those bananas. One day, the most delicious smell came drifting through the zoo. It smelled even better than bananas. So Gladys went out for lunch. She couldn't wait to taste what was making that deliciously sweet scent. She followed it all the way to a pizzeria. Yum. There were pizzas with pepperoni, pesto, and even pineapple. Gladys tried them all, but pizza wasn't what she smelled. When she found the sweet scent again, Gladys snooted, wiggled her toes, and followed it down the street to a fancy French cafe. This had to be where the smell was coming from. There were frog's legs, fried snails, and a frozen moose. Gladys tried them all, but fancy French food wasn't what she smelled either. Gladys was glad because there wasn't enough food on the table to feed a bird. When she found the sweet scent again, Gladys snorted, kicked up her heels, and followed it around the corner to... Where do you think she's going to go? An ice cream stand. Gladys hoped the smell was coming from here. There were 15 flavors of ice cream in 15 different colors. Gladys tried them all, but ice cream wasn't what she smelled. Gladys was tired and her tummy was nearly full until she smelled that deliciously sweet scent one more time. Gladys knew she was close. She smiled, licked her lips, and followed it around the block to the back entrance of the zoo. She sniffed all the way to a little food cart and found just what she was looking for. What do you suppose it is? Banana bread, yum. Gladys ate the whole loaf by herself. It was the warmest, sweetest lunch she'd ever tasted, but there was something missing. Her favorite dessert. So we've had our snack time. How about tea time with a penguin? This song is called A Penguin Drinking Tea and I learned it when I was in Girl Scouts. Here we go. Have you ever seen a penguin drinking tea? Take a look at me, a penguin you will see. Penguins, attention! Penguins, begin! Left flipper. Have you ever seen a penguin drinking tea? Take a look at me, a penguin you will see. Penguins, attention! Penguins, begin! Left flipper, right flipper. Have you ever seen a penguin drinking tea? Take a look at me, a penguin you will see. Penguins, attention! Penguins, begin! Left flipper, right flipper, nod your head. Have you ever seen a penguin drinking tea? Take a look at me, a penguin you will see. Penguins, attention! Penguins, begin! Left flipper, right flipper, nod your head, stick out your tongue! Have you ever seen a penguin drinking tea? Take a look at me, a penguin you will see. Penguins, attention! Penguins at ease. Hey, Nori, what is an elephant's favorite instrument? The trumpet, of course. <coughs> this story is called Never Play Music Right Next to the Zoo, written by John Lithgow with pictures by Lisa Hernandez. 
I went to a concert when I was a lad, no older than many of you. I sat with my sister, my mother, my dad, at a band shell right next to the zoo. The soft summer air was so balmy and sweet, and the program was running so long that I found myself falling asleep in my seat despite all the music and song. All at once, the conductor erupted with rage. A band of wild animals was storming the stage. Oh, children, remember, whatever you may do, never play music right next to the zoo. They'll burst from their cages, each beast and each bird, desperate to play all the music they've heard. The lions and the elephants, the bears and the raccoons will steal away the trumpets, the flutes and bassoons. Replace the musicians and chase them away. Then they'll sit in the band shell and play. The monkeys played fiddle. The bison played bass. The percussions were manned by the camel. The yak played the sax until red in the face, a surprisingly musical mammal. The bonobo played oboe, the ferret the flute, the jackal attacked the bassoon. The hippo had chosen the tuba to toot by the light of the silvery moon. Siberian tigers, Mongolian goats, a super abundance of bestial notes. As the animal orchestra filled up the air with chaos, confusion, and clatter, the audience calmly continued to stare as if nothing at all was the matter. I trembled with terror, suppressing a scream while my parents just sat there enraptured. Oh, how I wish it was only a dream and those creatures all safely recaptured. But since by the minute I'd grown less afraid, I decided to sit back and watch while they played. Look at that. They finished and each put his instrument down, then bowed and descended the stage. Each shed his tuxedo and evening gown and hurried back home to his cage. Then each reminisced, so grateful and glad, so full of contentment and pride. My mother, meanwhile, strolled away with my dad, but my sister remained by my side. She tugged on my sweater and spoke in my ear, you'd better wake up or we're leaving you here. Oh, children, remember, whatever you may do, never play music right next to the zoo. They'll burst from their cages, each beast and each bird, desperate to play all the music they've heard. No, never play music right next to the zoo and pay strict attention to rule number two. Bear it in mind for the rest of your days. Don't fall asleep while an orchestra plays. Today, we're going to be creating a fun game with some of our zoo animal friends. Can't wait for you to try it out with me. All right, if you've already picked up your craft sack, go ahead and get out the pictures of the animals. If you haven't picked it up yet, be sure to call your local Fort Worth Public Library and request one. Today we're going to be playing a zoo animal matching game. We're going to be matching babies to their parents. So you're going to take out your zoo animal card and cut along the dotted lines. Be sure to ask a grown up if you need help with your scissors. Now 
Now that you have your animals cut out, it's time to match the babies to their parents. Let's see if I can find the match to the zebra. Here's the zebra foal. What about the flamingo? Oh, there's the flamingo chick. That elephant calf doesn't go with the lion. There we go, there's the lion and the cub. You can also play this as a memory game and turn the cards over and try to get your matches like that. Have fun. I had so much fun with you today and I hope you did too. I can't wait to see you the next time. Until then, let's sing goodbye friends. Goodbye friends, goodbye friends. Goodbye, friends. It's time to say goodbye. And adios, amigos. Here we go. Adios, amigos. Adios, amigos. Adios, amigos. Es tiempo de decir adios. See you later, alligators. <laughs>